what a lot of them. My name is Mark Miles, and I love helping trainers, presenters, workshop facilitators really take the results to the next level in regards to the quality of the, the actual content in their workshops, but also the quality of the delivery and how much people actually understand when they're actually listening to you as a trainer, presenter, facilitator, coach, whatever you want to call yourself. And in today's video, I want to talk to you about the topic of how can you make sure that if English isn't the native language of any of your participants, how you can really increase the probability that a non-native English speaker is going to understand what you're going to say and actually receive the message the way that you intend it. Now, the way the world is shaping up, you can't guarantee that everybody seeing that's going to walk into your workshop is going to understand English at the same level that you do or, you know, be a perfect native speaker, so to speak. So in today's video, I want to share with you some simple things that you can deploy and implement as you are delivering to make sure that you heighten the probability that if you have someone that English isn't their first language, that you can still deliver your content, deliver it powerfully, and do it in a way that will still be understood to some degree by a non-native English speaker. So get excited, get ready to write, because the strategies I want to share with you are basically based on seven and a half years of teaching English to non-native English speakers. And also the art and science and basically my discoveries and realizations as I've been teaching public speaking to non-native English speakers as well. So get ready to write because I want to share with you some really great stuff that you can implement pretty much straight away if you are ever delivering training to migrants or to people that are just from non-English speaking backgrounds. All right. So get ready to write. So let's jump into one of the first foundational principles, first of all, and that is the principle of empathy. Yes, I know that might sound like a bit of a strange place to start, but what you need to appreciate is the mindset and the position of somebody that doesn't speak English as you do. Now, what I mean by that is I'd like you to imagine that you are actually studying another language. I'd like you to imagine what's it like for you if you are actually studying French or German or what was it like for you when you were in high school or even when you traveled to another country? What was it like for you, you know, as a learner or as a listener or as a communicator? What's it like for you? And whenever you are speaking to a non-native English speaker, you have to be the willing person to actually go into that place of empathy and remember that at the end of the day, it's not that they can't hear you. It's in a case that they simply cannot understand the words that you're actually using to actually get your message across. So the first thing I want to encourage you to do is have massive amounts of empathy for anyone that doesn't speak English as well as you do. So come from that place of empathy and come from that place of, hmm, what's it like for them right now as they are coming into this environment? Now, second thing, in terms of communication, we need to understand that ultimately the quality of your communication is the response that you get. Or the quality of your communication is how well the other person receives your message, not how well you actually deliver your message because you may think that your lesson or your training or your content or your keynote is amazing good phenomenal but what you don't appreciate is it's not what you say that matters it's how well the person actually receives it right so the, uh, one of the core tenets of communication is it's how they receive it that will determine the quality of it okay? so that opens up the i guess logical thought of we really need to be thinking about how well they're receiving it, not how well we're just saying it, right? And that means that we need to really be acutely aware of how is our message actually landing, particularly when we're speaking to a non-native English speaker. Now, next one. Key thing to remember also with communication is people do not listen as fast as we talk. Yes, folks, people do not listen as fast as we talk. Now, this is doubly the case if you're speaking to someone that is listening in another language other than English. Because when they're receiving your message, they actually may still be at a stage where they're listening to the words. They may need to translate the word to their own native language, and then they need to be able to go, okay, cool, 
What does that mean? Now, what do I do about that? Now, it certainly happens for English speakers as well. You know, what does that mean? What do I do about it? But there is that extra layer that's required for somebody that's listening to a foreign language, all right? So those are some of the mindset principles or the, current, I guess, fundamentals that we need to be aware of. Number one, have empathy. Number two, the quality of the communication that you deliver is, a, is the response that you get and how well the message lands, not how well you think you say it. Next piece, people do not listen as, as fast as you actually talk, right? So. Now, let's get into the strategy side of things, all right? So if you're right, I'm grabbing them. If you are taking notes, grab a pen and write these down, definitely. The first one, number one, is full stops and check-in. Full stop and check-in. Full stop and check-in. Now, it's a bit of a code and way to put it, but essentially what we need to appreciate is as a speaker, one of the most powerful things that you can actually do is actually have pauses between your thoughts. So you could essentially something say something to the effect of leadership is a critically important skill to develop. There are many ways to develop leadership. You can develop leadership by reading books. You can develop leadership by having one-on-one -on -one conversations and then getting feedback. What were some of the ways that I've just mentioned there, folks? Yell it out to me, what have we got? End of example, right? So what we've done there is we had some full stops and check-in. What I mean by that is basically is throughout my talking, so to speak, I put intentional pauses in between the key points or in between my thoughts as I've delivered. Now, great trainers, presenters, and uh, communicators are very conscious of how much information they're delivering at any one time. And we need to be able to enunciate and complete a thought. And when we do that, a listener from a non-native English speaking background finds that a lot easier to digest as opposed to somebody that just stands up and does a stream of consciousness, so to speak, and just talk, 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 talk. And as a listener, when there's breaks in the delivery, it is a lot more easy to actually digest, think about, and meditate on and have thinking time around. So first strategy, have your full stops and have your check-ins throughout your delivery. All right, so that was number one. Number two is what I highly recommend is if you are doing anything at all in a learning environment in regards to activities, have your instructions in multiple formats. Now, yes, you could absolutely translate into different languages. Yeah, it's possible, but most not really practical there. But multiple formats so maybe you say it maybe you write it on the flip chart or the whiteboard maybe you have it on a handout as well but the key thing is if you're delivering instructions do it in multiple formats so that people go i don't understand what he has said there but oh i can read it right now in front of me yeah i know what that means i can translate that i'm putting a dictionary and i'm all good to go right so have your instructions in multiple formats and even if you're doing videos you could have subtitles as well, right? You want to heighten the probability that everybody can receive your message and make that a higher probability. Next one, number three, watch your pace. Watch your pace. Now, what I mean by that is the stuff that doesn't matter, go as fast as you want, right? But the stuff that really matters, slow down. Okay, so when you become acutely aware of what's important and what's less important, you can really use pace to your advantage and learn to actually prioritize bits of content based on how important it is. And what you can also do is pre-frame your audience to tell them this stuff, yeah, it's a little bit more important. That stuff, not as important. And you can tell your audience the stuff that's less important, we're going to go through a little bit quicker and they're going to be okay with that. But at the end of the day, pace is one of the greatest tools you'll ever have. The important stuff, slow down. And your audience will get to know that, oh, that's important stuff. He's slowing down or she's slowing down. Next one, number four. Number four is repeat things in multiple different ways, but not the same way. Or the same words over and over and over again. 
Because what we often find is, I don't know if you can relate to this, but maybe you've been in a learning environment where an audience member or a workshop participant has put up their hand and said, I don't understand. I, I just don't get it, right? And then the trainer, the facilitator comes over and explains it. And then the audience member says, yeah, I still don't get it. Then the trainer uses exactly the same words and explains the thing in exactly the same way. And that's all good and well, but what we need to appreciate, particularly with non-native English speakers, is it's often the coding that we use or the word choice that we've used to actually explain the thing that has caught or created the blockage to actually understanding. So unless we become flexible with the word choice and explain things in multiple different ways, then we're not doing ourselves any favors. So what I highly recommend that you do is create dexterity and flexibility with your word choice. So for example, you could say, I went to the beach with my brother and sister, or you could also say, I went to the coastline with my siblings, all right? And you can go on and on, but through activities like that, practicing different ways to say things, you suddenly develop a richer vocabulary. And maybe it was just that one word or the second word or the third word that you said that that person was unfamiliar with that caught or created the blockage. So I highly recommend that you get used to creating a message in multiple different flavors so that somebody can understand it and they've got a higher probability of actually catching what you're delivering, all right? So I highly recommend develop that flexibility, develop that vocabulary richness, and learn to say things in multiple different ways and multiple times, but not just over and over and over again, all right? Next one, number five is use the expression, one of my favorites, not yet, but in a moment. Not yet, but in a moment. Not yet, but in a moment. Not yet. Hopefully you've written that down. I'll say it again. Not yet, but in a moment. Now, it's a great expression, and it's a really, really simplistic one, but it's such a powerful one because you can create a thought moment or a thought pause in your audience's mind before you say something. So, for example, here's the thing. If you don't use it, this is what happens, right? So um, everybody um, grab your books and head over to the left side of the room and we're about to go and do X, Y, Z. Now, what happens is as soon as you give the instructions, people are going to start acting on those instructions. But instead, if we use the expression not yet, but in a moment, this is what it sounds like. Not yet, but in a moment, we're going to head off to, to the left side of the room. We're going to take our books with us and we're going to do an activity and it's going to look like this. Now, the simple ex um, inclusion of that expression, not yet, but in a moment, transforms everything in the listener's mind. And they go, oh, okay, cool. I'm going to listen up a bit, but I don't need to act yet. All right. And it really creates a sense of security, safety, and people know what's expected of them. So I'll say it again, not yet, but in a moment. Not yet, but in a moment. All right. So not yet. But in a moment, I am really hoping that more and more people start to implement the phrase because it's a game changer. Next one, say things the way that you want people to think about it. Say it the way that you want people to think about it. Say it the way that you want people to think about it. Say it the way that you want people to think about it. All right. Now, let me give you a very simple example. And you need to magnify this in, contra in the um, context of a non-native English speaker. So... As a trainer, trainer walks in and says, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, we're going to go through some, um, we're going to go through some policies and legislation. It's going to be dull and boring, but bear with me as we go through it. Okay. Hopefully you haven't heard of that or heard that expression. It's going to be dull and boring, but bear with me as we go through it. Hopefully you haven't heard that too much as a participant, but guaranteed my instinct says that you have, right? Now, we need to flip that head and we actually need to tell our audience what we want them to think about it because if you don't we'll think about it people are going to think about it the way that you've told them you want them to think about it so we need to plant thoughts in your audience's mind that actually put everything into a positive light so for example you walk in and you say hey guys today we're going to cover some content that's going to really be enjoyable you're going to really enjoy 
doing the activities. You're going to really get a lot of value from it. And you'll be able to go back to your workplace and really get great results in the area of using policies, procedures, and know exactly how to implement them at just the right times. All right? That would be an example of telling the audience how you want them to think about it. And it is so important in the non-native English speaker's mind because everything you say, they will typically be translating or they'll be thinking about how do I think about it. Now, the last one relates to that one and it says always state things in the positive. Always state things in the positive. Now, it may seem like a bleedingly obvious thing to you as a native English speaker, but you need to appreciate it. As a non-native English speaker, and myself, I come from a language background, my master's in applied linguistics, I do speak two languages, I do speak English, I do speak Japanese quite well, I have studied Chinese, I have studied Korean, and I have studied French, still speak a little French, but at the end of the day, hmm, one thing I noticed is it is a lot harder if somebody tells me what to do in the negative. So if I say to an audience member, don't look at page 16. Don't look at page 16. Don't look at page 16. I realized very early on that suddenly the listener started to look at page 16 because <laughs> the unconscious mind cannot focus on a negative. And you can't think about what you don't want to think about without thinking about it. And if I say to you, don't think about a blue tree, please don't think about a blue tree. Please don't think about a blue tree highly likely right now you're thinking about a blue tree. So if you really want to connect your message and make sure it's heard, you need to state it in the positive. So instead of saying, don't be late, instead for a non-native English speaker, you really want to say, come on time, come at 8.55. Or it is a 10 minute break, come back at 8.35. Whatever the example is, right? Say it the way that you want them to receive it. So don't say, don't slam the door. Instead, you want to say, close the door quietly. Because they can receive that. They don't need to translate that in their mind and go, okay, what's the opposite of slam? Or what is slam? What's the opposite of slam? And they need to go through all the mental gymnastics to try and translate the negative to the positive, right? As a very subtle thing, but it's magnified if somebody is a non-native English speaker, okay? So let's recap. Number one, have empathy for your learners that don't speak English as well as you do. Whatever content you're delivering, whatever the seminar or workshop is, you need to appreciate you've got to have empathy for someone that doesn't English, speak English as well as you do. Next piece, the quality of your communication is the results that the person is receiving, not that you're giving, all right? Part of your communication is the response you get. Next, people don't listen as fast as you talk, all right? So let's get into it again, recapping full stops and check in, full stops and check in, full stop and check in. Put markers in between your thoughts and then check in to make sure someone's understand your delivery. Next, pace. Um, Make sure the fast stuff is the less important stuff. The slow stuff is the important stuff. Next, watch um, making sure you deliver instructions in multiple different ways. Next, uh, what else have we got? Use the expression, not yet, but in a moment. Not yet, but in a moment. Not yet, but in a moment. Now, naturally, you don't say it like that, but not yet, but in a moment. All right, cool. And next one, say it the way that you want them to think about it. Ideally, in a positive sense, and last of all, I avoid stating things in the negative. So, folks, hope you got some value from the video. As always, you really want to make sure that so what you say that matters is what people remember, go away and use and implement. And you always want to judge your success on how much value was created, how many problems were solved, and how much did people's actual lives change as a result of them attending your workshop, your seminar. So thanks for watching, team. Hope you got some value out of the video. And don't forget to like, comment, share. Let's get this message out there. And maybe drop in the comments which of these strategies that I've shared with you really resonates with you and you could see yourself using going forward. But not yet, but in a moment, I'm sure you're going to do that. Thanks for watching, team. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.